What's up, guys? It's Dorian. Before I forget to mention it, and before you guys forget to do it, click on subscribe and watch all my videos here. I've got some Linux from scratch series. I got a bunch of reviews going on, some how tos, and a bunch of vlogs. So subscribe so you don't miss any of that because my mom says they're cool. So you guys don't want to miss any of that. And if you like a video, don't forget to hit the like. And most importantly, don't forget to share. Also, you can follow me over on Twitter at Dorian.slash. Now, you might have to bear with me if I forget to do a couple things here. I'm using some different recording software instead of OBS, and I'm now doing multi-monitor. I'm expanding, I'm trying to make things uh, a little better, a little more interesting, a little cooler. So anyways, today is about Ubuntu 18.04, LTS Bionic Beaver. So let's have a look at the release schedule here. We're getting real close now. Today we are Friday the 13th. Oh, we're Friday the 13th. Anyways, happy Friday. Hopefully things are going well. Uh, anyways, so April 19th is the next stage. Uh, and April 26th is the actual release. So we're less than two weeks away with next week being the majority of the freezes. So we just passed yesterday the kernel freeze and the non-language pack translation deadline, whatever that means. And then next week we've got the final freeze and the release candidates. Now the release candidates are pretty much the finished product, except they're gonna do their very last minute fixes. So if something goes horribly wrong, they're gonna have one more chance to come out with their 18.04 LTS as a final, final release. And then they will come out with all their fixes for all the final, final releases fixes. You know how it goes. All right, so right now though, we're going to have a look at, not that, this, this, where is it? There we go. I told you I might have some problems. So, this is Ubuntu 18.04 Bionic Beaver, and as you can see, they finally got a background. It's been a long time since they've been mulling over it, I suppose, and it was always still the aardvark, so background, no big deal. The other thing you're going to notice is it's using GNOME. If you've been following me along, you know that Unity was kind of a mess. I was never a huge fan of it and now it's gone and they've gone back to gnome which is nice i i like gnome so to me this is good i suppose you could also follow along the project of the guys who took over unity and are going to try and keep going that's not what this is about but anyways um another thing that they were going to do, but it got dropped, was the new theme. So this is files. It's Nautilus. Uh, Nautilus, I'm sorry, files 3.26.3. So very, very new. The theming, the theming I'm still not crazy about, but they did change how this looks. It's kind of neat. It has a little extra sidebar. It, it's really just theming, but it's cool, it looks good, but they were supposed to go with the new icons from the community, which was, bring this back up, the Suru theme, which looks like this. So with the nice, smooth, orange folders, and then these kinds of icons. And these kinds of icons, as you can tell, are very much like mine, if you look on my left, bar here. These are the Mocha icons from that theme. Mocha and Arkmaya put together make my theme that I've selected for my daily use. So it looks very, very similar, but a little more papery, I suppose. A uh, little flatter, not quite as colorful. Le less colors, but it's got that paper look to it. So anyways, they dropped that and they are sticking with what they originally had. It would have been nice to see some new colors, some new icons, but it is what it is. 
I suppose you, you can always go and install it yourself if you wanted to. So another thing while I was talking about GNOME, I should have mentioned it is 3.28.0. So very, very new, which is very cool, which is also using Xorb. So they talked about going to Wayland and it was in 17.04 and then 17.04. 0.10, but now they've gone back to XOR, which is good because I prefer it. That's what I've always stuck to. Even when I've installed distros that have Wayland as the option, I stick with XOR because the video recording is better. It, it may be old and clunky, but it works really, really well. So now back to applications, you've got your standard suite of Ubuntu applications, the archive manager, Deja dupe, your calculator, disks, the BAOBAB, and Firefox Quantum. Uh, if it comes up, sorry, I've got a lot of stuff running. And if we run to here, it is Quantum 59, 64 bit. So that's good. So it still has the Ubuntu sounds, the pop up. I don't know if, if you guys heard that. Uh, G parted standard stuff, uh, screenshot, simple scan, rhythm box, Remina, uh, not really much of a change. This is just going to be newer versions of things. And Thunderbird and this new application, which is the GNOME to do. So it's a organizer where you can just add a new task to get you to do stuff. Right, and you can check them off, you give due dates and whatnot. It's your typical organizer, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. It's like it's like a lot of to-do lists that are included in Outlook and um, on different websites. So it's nice to have if you never had it. And then transmission and the Ubuntu Software Center and your videos. I had heard that VLC was supposed to be part of this, but it is not. So I'm not sure if that's a licensing thing, but the cool thing is we have LibreOffice 6. So that's a little more up to date. It works a little better. It's a little faster. It loads quicker and it's going to have better compatibility for your Microsoft documents. All right, uh, what else? The kernel. The kernel is 4.15. View name A, 4.15. Let's make that bigger. 4.15.0-13. Um, this, along with system D, was supposed to make Ubuntu boot much faster. Now, I haven't found it to boot any faster than it did before. I've actually found it to be slower in a lot of cases by a lot. As you know, run Scion Linux. Oh, that is a screensaver. It's not buggy, it's just a screensaver. Scion Linux, which also uses 4.15.0.13. And I've had the issues with the slow booting as well in here. So it's, and because Scion Linux is based on Ubuntu, I'm getting the same problem. Yeah, it's not hard to figure out uh, that it's not getting the boost that they claim. And there are also some other issues that I found. It, it seems to be working now, but the wire connected, this was showing disconnected all the time. And I was actually online, I could get on the internet, but it was showing disconnected. And somehow now it's up and running. I also have this issue in Scion Linux, which is based on Ubuntu 18.04. This is the newest version. And you can see it also shows that it is disconnected, but it's not, it is online. So I'm not sure if this is something that will be fixed, but yeah, you can see it's online. So minor little last minute things, which I think should have been fixed by now, but there'll be lots of last minute bugs and whatnot that are going to have to be sorted anyways. 
Uh, and lastly, adding PPAs, which before you add the PPA, you say yes, and then you do your pseudo app update. Now they've streamlined it, so you add a PPA in the terminal, and as soon as it's added, it will do an pseudo apt update right away for you. So that's kind of a bonus that it, you know, skips a step there. And lastly, I want to show you guys the installation. Now there's a change with the installation. It's not the installer itself. They're still using Ubiquity. So I'm going to go through here. Normal installation is going to be what we see here. And then there is minimal installation. So minimal installation, as you can see, it says web browser and basic utilities. That means you're not going to have Thunderbird, you're not going to have Rhythmbox, you're not going to have LibreOffice, you're not going to have anything but, but a web browser and utilities. So you're not going to have a, a useless system with no tools to do anything. You're just going to have very, very little added, which is pretty nice. But you can go into the software center and you can re-add whatever software you want. So this is really nice because some people hate installing an OS and they just go through and they strip everything out. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to pause the video. I'm going to do a normal installation, check out the software that it has, let you guys know, and then I'm going to pause it again. I'm going to do a full reinstall again with the minimal installation and show you guys what the difference is. So pause the video now. So here we go with the full installation. When it was done and it wanted to reboot, it went to the console or terminal Ubuntu shutdown and it just kind of froze there. So I had to force the machine to reboot. Uh, Ubuntu has been... Uh, uh, uh. Okay, well, this is odd because I asked it to download updates while it installed, but I guess it has more updates, which it should have done. Anyways, so I guess the difference, you still get XOR, you still get Wayland, but whereas before the default was Wayland, now the default is XOR. So you still have the option to do either one, I suppose. So let's have a look at the applications here. Same thing that was in the live, same stuff, We've got events here, and still no VLC. So I guess that was something that was supposed to happen that just didn't happen. So here we go. Let's do this all over again. I'm going to pause the video again and do a minimal installation and let's see what the difference is. All right. So the minimal install is finished. And once again, when I said reboot, it did the shutdown sequence. It got to this point and nothing. So I'm going to force the reboot again. That's not what I meant to do. I was clicked on the wrong thing. I'm still learning this. OBS. But anyways, while we're waiting for this, I'm going to mention, is it worth upgrading from 16.04 LTS to 18.04 LTS at this point? Or when it comes out, sorry, in two weeks. And to be honest, I would say no. Um, I stuck with 14.04 for quite a long time. I just want to show you quickly here while I'm logging in, you still have the option of going to Wayland. So, uh, yeah, I used 14.04 for quite a while after 16.04 came out and I didn't have an issue with it and I upgraded eventually and I'm running it now and I'm going to run it for a while. So really you have to ask yourself, what reasons do you have to upgrade? So going over what I talked about, so other than other than the looks, uh, it's using GNOME, but you can download Ubuntu GNOME 16.04. The background, download it. GNOME 3.28, yes, it's newer. It has minor differences, like the control panel, some of the newer theming, only works in the newer GNOME versions. So there's that. 
the applications, you'll get newer versions of applications, but the versions from before, unless they're not working for you, do you need to upgrade? But these are all things that you need to ask yourself. And also the new kernel of 4.15 and the new one coming out 1.6. Is that going to be an advantage for you or not? And I was wondering if this was going to pop up again. So the download updates during installation doesn't seem to download all the updates. So this is the minimal installation. Uh, I'll probably do another video and discuss more in depth about whether it's worth upgrading or not. So these are all the applications that you get on the minimal installation. So you have other than, you know, calculator, language setup, you have Nautilus. Firefox and your terminal software center, a text editor, which is get it in this case. And then of course your usual utilities, you still get the document viewer, which is good screenshot, which is good. Those things come in handy archive manager. Other than that, yeah, this is really a stripped down version here. And one thing I'm curious about is if we do this, we're still using 5.5 gigs. This is a fresh installation and it's still using quite a bit of hard drive. I should have checked beforehand when I did the full installation, but it's, it's a little late now, but 5.5 gigs, it's still quite a bit. So Bionic Beaver, I know it was a bit more of a in-depth review, in-depth look, but we're going to be coming out in less than two weeks with the full version. So that's going to be pretty much what you saw today, other than some minor fixes and bug fixes and whatnot. No major new features are going to be popping out. So yeah, pretty much what I showed you is what it's going to be. And of course, when the LTS actually comes out, I am again going to download it and I'm going to check it out and just see if they made any changes or not. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what's coming out. And hopefully if you liked the video, you'll click on that like button and share it. What do I have coming up? Uh, Sabayon, Zabayon, Zabayon, Sabayon, depending on how you want to say it. It is a Gentoo, Gentoo, Gentoo based distro. And that's what's going to be my next review. I've booted into it looks good. I'm curious why the ISO is so huge. It's 2.2 gigs. So we'll have that coming up in a review. So if you want to see it, subscribe. And again, don't forget, I'm over on Twitter at Dorian.slash and you'll, I also post my videos there as well and a bunch of random other Linux stuff. So that's all I got for now. Till next time, guys, bash on.